All right, guys, Rich here from the RC Network, and I have gotten all of the electronics mounted in my G-Made R1 Rock Buggy now, so this thing is pretty much ready to hit the trails. I wanted to give you guys a quick little update on not only what electronics I chose, but some positives and negatives that I've seen on the kit so far. Uh, having installed the electronics, I definitely got to uh, really get to know this kit very, very well. Now, there are two choices uh, if you decide to purchase one of these kits. There is a pretty much an already assembled roller that goes for just a little bit more money, um, and it basically comes, as I said, already assembled. There is also a kit version that is a little bit less money. However, you do have to put everything together, including painting the body. Now, pluses and minuses on that, uh, having got the roller, or the already assembled one, uh, you do have to do quite a bit of disassembly to get the electronics in. Uh, the uh, kind of chassis there is a very compact chassis, so everything that's inside, including the transmission and how you want to mount the motor, you have to do some disassembly to get all of that out. Now, Staying on the negatives here, and then we'll move all to the positive side. Uh, the the two po or two negatives that I did run across, and I mentioned this in a previous video, is it uses all Philips hardware. Um, I'm definitely not a big fan of Philips hardware, so I had to kind of break out some old school tools, including this guy right here, a little Weeha uh, Philips driver to get this thing all up and going, um, and. The other thing that I noticed when I really started getting to know this kit is there are so many screws, but with all those screws, there are hidden nuts everywhere. So every time you see these little screws right here throughout the kit, there are nuts on the underside. So when you start unscrewing stuff, nuts just fall out everywhere. So I know that may sound kind of crazy, but anyways, that is definitely what happens. So especially when you're working towards the motor area, you have a, a magnetic motor and you have steel screws, guess what happens? So anyways, um, really that's the only negatives that I have so far in this kit. I have not driven it yet, uh, but as far as the positives, God, this thing just looks cool. It just looks mean. I mean, it looks like no other rock buggy on the market. It just looks, has that evil kind of stance to it. So uh, let's uh, go over some of the electronics that I used. Um, very front right here, I ended up using a Savox 1283SG. Puts out like over 400 inch ounces of torque. God, that's a lot of torque. So it's definitely going to be good for these big 2.2 inch uh, wheels and tires. Um, aluminum horn in there, that is an axial uh, clamping anodized aluminum horn. It's definitely uh, a cool little piece right there. As far as motor and ESC, I ended up using a um, Tekken FXR combo. Came with a pro hand-wound 45 turn motor. So definitely a cool motor for this thing. Didn't want to quite go all the way to the crawler end of things with a 55 turn but I thought the 45 was going to be a good kind of uh, median to that. Just an SR300 receiver that I can mount up to any of my Spectrum remotes that I have. And Black Series 3S 2200 milliamp LiPo 40C burst, or I'm sorry, 40C continuous. And then under the hood right here, and I'll show you just a little bit later, I do have my 10 amp Castle BEC just to keep every, everything happy as far as electronics, so the Savox definitely likes to rob uh, um, voltage from everything else. So um, all in all, that's the electronics that I chose. Definitely a cool buggy. I can't wait to get this thing on the trail. Um, but in the meantime, chose the number one right there. Hey, number one. I just I dig the uh, the old school vintage kind of graphics that the kit came with. The shocks are in a droop setting. So you'll notice when you set it down, it kind of droops down, and that's that's what basically it's meant for. Now, there is also a sprung version that you can set up, and that basically means that it'll be sitting up higher off the ground. You'll see it kind of drop there when I pick this thing up. Uh, this does not 
compete with the full articulation that it does have, which is a tremendous amount. It's probably about eight inches right there that it's articulating, so pretty cool. You'll hear my servo kind of go haywire because it is turned on right now. Other cool thing you do get with um, this particular um, G made, you get all steel links all throughout the kit, including the steering links. Definitely something you won't have to upgrade. However, they do offer a high clearance uh, lower link right here that is available through G-Made. Other than that, that is about it. Let's do a quick little uh, test of this thing. I got everything on right now and just want to show you some of the steering. The steering is just ridiculous on this thing. Um, I have full travel right now on my steering. Have it turned all the way up to about 150%. So it's definitely getting some really wide steering on this thing. Pretty good speed right there with the 1283. Not really meant for speed. However, it does have that over 400 inch ounces of torque. So pretty cool. As far as the throttle right there, let me go ahead and click it on. The BEC is kicking in. Got a delayed reverse. I need to slow the reverse down a little bit. I can do that through the hot wire. But that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about the GMade R1, definitely throw it on down below. Until then, this is Rich from the RC Network. Thumbs up and subscribe. That's it for now, guys. Over and out.